हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल सेफ सू सक्सी नाउ इन द लास्ट वीडियो आई टॉक्ड अबाउट द यू पी एस सी सिलेबस इन दिस वी स्टार्ट आ फर्स्ट हिस्ट्री चैप्टर ऑफ क्लास सिक्स एन सी आर टी हिस्ट्री विच इज़ कम्पोज ऑफ टू वर्ड्स हिज मीन्स मैन एंड द स्टोरी वी ऑल नो सो हिस्ट्री मीन्स स्टोरी ऑफ अ मैन दैट हाउ ही हैज़ एवॉल्व वॉट चेंजेस हैज अकर्ड सिंस द एशियंट टाइम्स एंड मैनी मोर Our first chapter starts with questions: What, where, how, and when. First is Rash, uh, Rashida's question. Rashida sat reading the newspaper. Suddenly, her eyes fell on a small headline: One hundred years ago. After reading this, lots of question uh, comes to her mind that how the activities of the past were are different from the present one how the people lived what they ate etc so going on to the next topic what can we know about the past we humans are very curious of learning new things we try to explore more and more and man's past is also one of the topic that catches everyone's attention there are several things we can find out what people ate the kinds of clothes they wore the houses in which they lived we can find about the lives of hunters herders farmers rulers merchants priests crafts persons artists musicians and scientists this shows that how the present world is different from a past where did people live people have lived along the banks of this river for several hundred thousand years means earlier people used to go place to place in search of food slowly they became food gatherers and then producers that is they started growing crops early man lived in caves after they became food producers they started to live near the water bodies they used to hunt animals for food and for skin to use it as clothes now the question arises that why they live near water bodies this is because to irrigate their fields uh, these two areas suleiman and kirtar hills where the wheat and barley was grown and animals like sheep goat and cattle were reared by the people and they lived in villages after they became food producers they started living settled life that is now they don't go from place to place in search of food we know that rivers were the source of water for agriculture in those times so they started living near the water bodies the places where rice was first grown are to the north of the vindhyas which is also uh, this area has also a water body Next, about four thousand seven hundred years ago, some of the earlier cities flourished on the banks of these rivers. We know the reason why the cities flourished near the banks of rivers. Cities developed on the banks of Ganga and its tributaries, and along the sea coast. Next, in ancient times, the area along the rivers to the south of the Ganga was known as Magadh. The area is known as the Magadh. Rulers were very powerful and set up a large kingdom. Kingdoms were set up in other parts of the country as well earlier people used to fear that if they go to the far off place then they will lose their caste but still many people move to new places and they explore many things and because of this movement there were social and cultural interactions among the people like merchants travel with caravans to or ships carrying valuable goods from place to place trade was also there and religious teachers were there to spread their teachings all over the country by moving to new places they learn new things and new activities like um like new ways of carving stones composing music and even cooking food our next topic is names of land india has come from the word indus which is a name of a river indus 
भारत भारत वर्ड वॉज यूज फॉर द पीपल लिविंग इन द नॉर्थ वेस्ट मैंशन इन द विच इज मैंशन इन द रेप वेदा दैट्स वाई आई आ कंट्री इज नोन एज इंडिया एज वेल एज भारत ना फाइंडिंग आउट अबाउट द पास्ट ना द क्वेश्चन राइज इज दैट हाउ डू वी हाउ डू वी केम टू नो अबाउट द पास्ट लाइफ दैट दिस इज बिकॉज दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द आर्क्योलॉजिस्ट आर्क्योलॉजिकल सोर्सेज एंड लिटरेरी सोर्सेज सम इंस्क्रिप्शन द कावरिंग्स ऑन द स्टोन ऑफ पिलर्स मैन्यू स्क्रिप्ट दैट इज हैंड रिटन थिंग्स और ओल्ड मॉन्यूमेंट्स और बिल्डिंग्स एक्सेट्रा many manuscripts were eaten away by the insects and some were destroyed but many have survived often preserved in temples and monasteries earlier books were written in sanskrit or in prakrit books generally books were generally based on religious beliefs lives of kings and queens as well as the medicines and science for keeping records of victories in battles and orders Kings got these things inscribed and sometimes built tem- temples. Inscriptions means the carvings on the stones or pillars. Here comes the term archaeologist. Now, archaeologist, those who study about these objects, that is, the stud, uh, they study the remains of buildings made of stone and bricks. paintings and sculptures they also explore the excavate to find tools weapons pots pans ornaments and coins here historians and archaeologists are detectives who explore things and collect clues to find our past here is the picture left a pot from an old city pots like these were used about 4700 years ago earlier pots were just dried under the sun later they were baked in the kiln which made the pots durable and strong pots were designed to make them look attractive design of flowers and leaves were generally observed next is one past or man- many past was different for different sections of people lives of merchants were different from that of farmers and that of kings and queens this is also true for even today for example lives of andaman people are distinct be- uh, of the lives of the people living in the cities because andaman people get their own food by fishing hunting and collecting forest produce but we depend on others for supplies of food we know that the kings and their victories because of the inscription but for ordinary people archaeology helps us to know about the life of the people how they lived what they ate what festivals they celebrate all the culture and social as well as economic life what do dates mean we generally notice that in history dates were in decreasing order and sometimes in increasing order this is because events which took place before the birth of jesus christ the founder of christianity are written in decreasing order with letters bc that is before christ and events after the birth of the jesus christ is written as ad and anno domini which means the year of the lord next is uh, next is sometimes ce is used instead of ad and bce used instead of bc the letter c stands for common era and bce stands for before common era era means time now coming to the elsewhere box there here is a term term uh, deciferment deciferment is the process of converting code to normal languages deciphers or the scholars convert these codes into non- normal language let's see an example rosetta is a town on the north coast of egypt and here an inscribed stone was found which contain inscriptions in three different languages uh, languages and scripts greek and the two forms of egyptian scholars who could read greek figured out that the names of kings and queens were enclosed in the little frame called the cottage they then placed the greek and the egyptian sign side by side and identified the sounds for 
which the Egyptian letters stood. As you can see, a lion stood for L and a bird for A. Once they knew what the letters stood for, they could read other inscriptions as well. So here we end with our first chapter. Hope you liked it. Thank you.